Hello everyone, my name is Nayeon Gwon from Texas a m University. I'm going to present our work Exislens, an auto-detecting system that identifies interaction challenges with everyday objects. We will start with an overview of the Exislens system. Exislens is built upon the novel datasets XSDB and XSreal to train on inaccessible object detector for indoor scenes. We also introduce XSMeta, a taxonomy that helps categorize assistive functions of 3D assistive augmentations, thus supporting users in obtaining tailored suggestions for their environments. By combining these two subcomponents, we present XSLens on end-to-end -end system that detects inaccessibility from indoor environments for inexperienced users. Now, let's start with the motivation for our work. As Microsoft Inclusive Design highlighted, disabilities can be context-dependent. Anyone can face barriers in interacting with everyday objects under various contexts, such as arm injury, having both hands occupied, low light conditions, or when ensuring baby and pet safety. A typical doorknob can suddenly become hard to operate when you have a wrist injury and are wearing a cast. Instead of replacing an entire doorknob with lever-style door handles, you may add a 3D printed extension. As the demonstration showed, 3D assistive augmentations can address barriers under different contexts at different interaction levels, such as using the hand, wrist, or the entire arm. To better understand people's needs, we compared the Microsoft Inclusive Design Guidebook and Access Lens. In the baseline condition, participants were allowed to use any external online sources, while in the experimental condition, they only used Access Lens. We conducted a within subject study where participants experienced both conditions with eight non-experts in accessibility participating. They were given indoor photos and performed three tasks. First, finding inaccessible objects with possible barriers. Second, upon identifying the objects, they came up with the related disabled context. Lastly, they were asked to suggest solutions to address the barriers they found. In our pre-task interview, we found a significant gap between participant experience with facing barriers and actively adopting solutions. Even though all participants stated that they had issues before, such as arm injuries, having both arm occupied, and leg injuries. We found that they had internal oblasm, which made them think their struggles were not enough to be considered as a disability. Participant 2 mentioned that they had to just wait until their injured arm recovered, and Participant 5 also mentioned that they didn't think their challenge could be counted as a disability. This oversight made them cope with the situation and fail to address the problem in a timely manner. When finding solutions, we observed that most participants did not actively engage with online resources. Only one participant tried to use a Google search with some general keywords such as accessible bathroom, but reported that they struggled to find appropriate search terms. Also, most of the solution required complete renovation and replacement, resulting in a generally high mental load for participants to install them. On the other hand, AccessLens successfully reduced their mental load by presenting 3D augmentations, which were considered more straightforward and cost-effective. Even though AccessLens did not explicitly present the related context, participants could still easily infer related contexts by looking at the adaptations. In summary, AccessLens outperformed written guidebook at all three steps required to address barriers. Inspired by this finding, we defined a problem statement here. For inexperienced users, especially when they don't have diagnosed disabilities, it is hard for them to recognize barriers of everyday objects, thus failing to address challenges in a timely manner. Also, finding applicable low-cost solutions with less mental burden for installation is very difficult. To address our problem, we outline our goal. We aim to build a system that enables auto-detection of inaccessible everyday objects and suggest solutions. However, there are two major challenges. First, there are no existing datasets tailored to inaccessible object detection. Second, a taxonomy does not exist to understand the interaction types and objectives of low-cost assistive augmentations creating a significant gap for inexperienced users to access such solutions. We will introduce the first challenge here, the lack of a dataset for inaccessible object detection. 
Different types of objects often pose different challenges, mainly due to varying interaction needed. However, no existing dataset provides such granularity. ADU20K provides great hierarchical information, such as cabinet door handle. Still, we would like to take one step further to small bar handle, large bar handle, lever handle, etc. This enables us to infer varied interactions. The second challenge is the lack of taxonomy to classify 3D assistive augmentations. Many designers have built a great set of assistive designs on Thingiverse, the shared repository. However, the current search heavily relies on the voluntary information that the uploader provided, such as title, description, and text. However, it will be very difficult for our target populations, inexperienced users, to identify the applicable search terms to locate those designs as we observe in our preliminary study. Now, we would like to introduce our three major contributions. The first contribution is XSDB and XSREAL, the novel datasets for inaccessible object detection. The AD20K dataset uses common object class names such as knob, handle, and switch. In XSDB, we identify the types of objects as shown here. This enables us to infer the required unique interactions. We re-annotated six common object classes from the ADU20K dataset. From these six common object classes, we expanded them to 21 inexplicable classes that can specify needed interactions and barriers. XSDB contains around 2,000 indoor images with about 10,000 objects re-annotated with 21 inexplicable classes. We also provide the XSREAL dataset built for testing and it contains 42 high-resolution and modern indoor images with around 400 objects annotated. We trained an off-the-shelf detector with XSDB, and it showed good performance in detecting small occurrences of inaccessible objects in indoor scenes. Please refer to our paper for more details and numbers. Our dataset is available for public access on our dataset website. The second contribution is Access Meta, a novel metadata to categorize 3D assistive augmentation. There are three categories, actuation, indication, and constraint. The designs under the actuation category reduce motor requirements to interact with the objects. This includes two subcategories, operation and reach. Indication designs create multi-model functions for better identification of objects. This includes visual labels and tactile feedback. Constraint designs limit or prevent certain population from operating the object, mainly due to the safety reasons. We provide a 3D augmentation dictionary fully annotated with access meta categories. This dictionary is also available on our dataset website. Lastly, our third contribution is Access Lens, an end user toolkit for inaccessibility detection and solution suggestions. Here we show the user walkthrough using Access Lens. First, users can upload an indoor photo on the main page. It will automatically detect objects with possible barriers. By clicking a detected object, user can view the augmentations categorized with Access Meta. They can also view full augmentations for various objects even without uploading their photos using the Augmentation Explorer. Finally, we would like to present how we evaluate access lens. To assess how acceptable access meta categories are for a wider population, we let crowd workers annotate designs in our 3D augmentation dictionary using Amazon Mechanical Turk. Each augmentation was labeled by three different workers. The crowd workers annotation achieved an 83% match with the ground truth provided by our research team which indicates a fairly good acceptance of access meta. Although not many in numbers, a few workers suggested new categories outside of access meta for some designs, such as safety, support, stabilizer, and protector. These indicate that access meta can also be expanded through community inputs as we discover more diverse contexts and objects. To evaluate the end-to-end -end pipeline using access lens, we recruited six participants. 
Most of them did not have any prior experience with 3D printing and accessibility, while one participant had expert knowledge in 3D printing and moderate experience in accessibility research. All participants reported that photo taking and uploading was very straightforward and easy, not having any obstacles. AccessLens did not provide any step-by-step -step instructions, and there was no intervention by the facilitator. Participants naturally gravitated towards taking wide-view photos of their place. Participant 4 mentioned that they made sure to capture the entire kitchen to include as many aspects as possible that might require changes. All participants stated that the automated detection was very accurate, and expressed their trust in the results even when they input highly clustered photos. They also reported that access lens effectively captures small occurrences of the objects. Still, there were a few minor detection errors such as false negative and misclassification, which did not affect their overall trust in AI-based detection. From all participants, we observed a significantly elevated confidence and awareness in recognizing barriers compared to their responses before using Access Lens. Most participants highlighted that Access Lens greatly expanded their perspectives in understanding disability in general. Participant 3 acknowledged that they only thought about permanent disabilities, but were able to learn many more contextual disabilities across a large spectrum. All participants selected two to three designs each. Even with augmentations that require some assembly, all participants were easily able to assemble and install them without any help. Interestingly, they actively engaged with adapting the designs, such as using duct tape to put the parts together instead of screws as intended. Still, some dimensional errors were reported. Participant 5's door opener did not stay at arm height since it was a little loose. Incorporating well-known customization tools within Access Lens would be greatly beneficial. Participants also provided suggestions to improve the interaction with Access Lens. Three participants hoped for detailed descriptions to be displayed within the app without having to redirect to the design page. Three participants also suggested presenting the required materials for each design so that they can make decisions based on the material availability. One participant suggested that animated 3D previews would be helpful to quickly capture how augmentations can change existing interactions. Lastly, we recruited two experts with more than 10 years of experience in accessibility research. Both experts acknowledged that Access Lens can effectively raise awareness of accessibility issues for inexperienced users. For further improvements, the experts provided invaluable feedback. This includes more explicit explanation to help users build an understanding of context instead of the current implicit contextualization by showing adaptations, especially for people with specific needs. The expert also suggested user-based customization by collecting disability types and prioritizing and filtering out the results accordingly. The experts also suggested incorporating design parameters such as room configuration and spacing, and crowdsourcing to collect more diverse examples. This would be an important direction for our future work. We conclude the presentation by highlighting our target user scope once more. Many existing works in assistive technology and accessible computing have mostly focused on assisting people with diagnosed disabilities. While general in-home modification focuses on aesthetics and functional upgrades by smart devices, our work expands the effective population by adopting the concept of contextual disabilities that can affect a wider audience. Thank you for listening and please feel free to contact us for more discussion and inquiries.